pictures. These are dose response curves. And a dose response curve is just what it shows there is that it's the dose of the drug plotted against what the effect is. So if you were to plot a, um, a curve of just the dose, so if I was to make a curve like this and I did like one milligram, two milligrams, three, four, five, six, like this, and then effect. If, I, if you were to do that lab experiment, usually the curve looks like this, because usually you start to have effect and then you have an effect and it maxes out. And the problem is that when you're trying to figure out dosing and, and sort of differences in dosing schedules, like having a curve that's almost straight up and down is completely useless. So that's why uh, the dose response curves are always logarithmic, okay? So log of the dose. And if you sort of vaguely remember what logarithms are, that's okay. I'm not going to ask you to do log tables or anything like that. But the idea of a log logarithmic scale is that it's exponential. So it's like, you know, here's one, here's ten, here's a hundred, here's a thousand, here's ten thousand, etc. Right. So a little bit of movement on this curve is actually a huge change in dose on this kind of a scale. All right. So for this first one, this for competitive inhibition, what you're seeing here is increasing doses of norepinephrine. Um, norepinephrine is the normal neurotransmitter for the sympathetic nervous system. But you can also actually, this is, this is not spelled right, I'm sorry, norepinephrine. Um, you can actually give it IV, uh, and usually you're only ever going to give it IV when somebody is almost dead because it's like a last ditch drug that you use when someone has terrible shock. Um, but if you give increasing doses of norepinephrine, you'll see an increase in heart rate. So if you had a 100% increase in heart rate, that means their heart rate doubled, right? So that's like, you know, if your heart rate is double, that's a pretty fast heartbeat. All right. So norepinephrine, this is that curve. Okay. Now, propranolol, norepinephrine increases your heart rate through what receptor in the heart? Theta 1 receptors, right? So propranolol is a, is a drug that actually non specifically binds any kind of beta receptor. So it binds beta 1 or beta 2. And in both cases, it's a blocking agent, all right? So again, if you have a drug coming into a receptor, uh, and then activating it by, you know, it says yay. Um, then uh, if you have propranolol come and sit in that receptor, then there is no yay, right? Nothing, nothing good happens. So norepinephrine, as you increase the dose, it increases heart rate. Right? Propranolol binds that same receptor, but does not increase heart rate. So if you give a patient a big dose of propranolol, and then you give them norepinephrine, the propranolol is sitting in a lot of those receptors. So in order for norepinephrine to like out flood the propranolol, for there to be way more norepinephrine than propranolol, so that the norepinephrine has a chance to bind in that receptor, you have to give more norepinephrine. That should make should make sense, right? So once you have a huge amount of norepinephrine, and again, this is log table, right? So here you have like a certain amount of norepinephrine that you use, and here's 10 times the amount of norepinephrine. Here's 100 times the amount of norepinephrine. So it's much higher amounts of norepinephrine in order for the norepinephrine to bind the receptor in order to have the effect of increasing heart rate. Okay, um, and similarly, if you add more propranolol, you need more norepinephrine, you know, to out, I don't know, what's the word I'm trying to think of, like outnumber, I guess outnumber the amount of propranolol so that it can bind the receptor and do its thing. But regardless, when you add enough norepinephrine, it'll shove the propranolol out of the, so uh, out of the way and have its full effect, right? That makes sense. Right, so this is for a competitive, reversible inhibitor like propranolol. Now in this, this is now the same graph, uh, except in this case they measured increase in blood pressure. That's okay, because increasing heart rate increases the blood pressure. So here's the original curve, where increasing amounts of norepinephrine increases uh, the blood pressure super duper. Tamoxifenzamine is a non-competitive irreversible inhibitor of the norepinephrine receptor. Uh, okay, so we're talking about the norepinephrine receptor. So here's like a little receptor. It's all happy and norepinephrine binds. Let's say it's increasing blood pressure by binding the non-essential blood vessels in your body, which are which receptor? Alpha 1. So here's an alpha 1 receptor. So norepinephrine normally binds and that causes an increase in blood pressure. Now, phenoxybenzamine is a non-competitive inhibitor, so it's not competing for that same site. In fact, what it's doing is just destroying the receptor. So it binds covalently to the receptor 
in some way so that norepinephrine can't bind at all. All right, so let's say that this is the phenoxybenzamine and it's basically screwed up the binding site. So now norepinephrine can't bind at all, all right? So now, you know, you'll, you keep adding more and more norepinephrine trying to get more of an effect, but you can't because there's no receptor. The receptor has been destroyed. So the more phenoxybenzamine I add, the more receptor is taken out of the equation, right? So this, and that is why, no matter how much more norepinephrine I add, I'm not going to get my full effect anymore. And this, does that make sense? So this is an irreversibly binding blocker. It's not competing for the site. It's not a question of out-competing each other by, you know, having higher concentrations of the norepinephrine. It's a question that the receptors just aren't there. Right. So that's to just um, reinforce this idea that the amount of effect you get is proportional to the amount of receptor that's there. Right. And on the quiz I asked you about ceiling effect, the reason you get a ceiling effect is that at some point all the receptors are bound and you only have a finite amount of receptors in your body at any time. All right, does that make sense? Mm.